welcome back to Kinga's World. Um, today I'm coming to you with a bit of a story time. As you can guess from the title, it's going to be on a video about a weird story about something that happened to me. It didn't happen to me very recently, it's been years ago, but this morning I was getting ready for work and uh, normally I watch things on YouTube, either the YouTubers that I follow or just some random videos. And in my recommended uh, videos was this clip for uh, from this morning, the one with Holly and Philip. Um, so anyway, it was this video and uh, it was about the girls who had their drinks spiked and what's happened to them and all that. And it reminded me of something that happened to me years ago. And... Uh, it was like a wake up call and the lesson that I've learned and to make me be really careful with who I drink with and who I accept drinks from. So this, as I said, this story did not happen to me very recently. This story actually, this story, the situation actually happened when I was still living in Poland. I was at uni and I was about 20 years old. I was on my third year of uni. I was studying full time, but I was also working in the club four to five nights a week as a waitress. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like in Poland, uh, in the clubs, you can have the waitresses bring the drinks to your table. Um, so I was just doing that job and I loved it. But it was also a crazy time. I was partying a lot, <laughs> drinking a lot. And uh, we had our Christmas party in the middle of December. And it wasn't in our usual club. We actually rented a pub uh, not far from the club where we were all working. And uh, we rented half of the pub and half of the pub was rented by another company having a Christmas party. And, um, and I remember going there and uh, planning a night, crazy night out with my friends. So we got there and I literally had two shots of vodka, which now two shots of vodka make me a little tipsy. Then two shots of vodka was nothing. It was just like, just nothing. So I had two shots of vodka with my friends. And uh, I remember getting there. I remember sitting, having something to eat and two shots of vodka. And that's all I remember from that night. So next thing I remember is waking up in the hospital. And uh, I will never forget that because waking up in this strange place, it was so weird because I literally I woke up and I look at myself. I was I was in the room alone. I was in a bed that looked like hospital bed, um, but I didn't know where I was. So I just look at myself and like I took like lifted the cover up and I was naked, and I had catheter fitted in, and my head was really really hurting at the back. So I touched my head and there was a massive bump at the back of my head. So I woke up and I was like what the hell where am i oh my god and i couldn't see any of my belongings i couldn't see my phone my clothes my wallet my purse nothing so there was like a buzzer next to my bed which i pressed and um and then this nurse this male nurse came in and i was like i've got a couple of questions and he was like yeah and i was like where am i why do i have this thing fitted inside of my lala i don't think it's the word lala but hey and uh why do i have this massive bump on my head so he looked at me and he said to me like you got really drunk and you got really sick and you ended up in hospital and i was like how how is it possible that i like got drunk i had two shots of vodka and then he looked at me with this like very judgmental face he was like so if you were not drunk what kind of drugs were you high on and like at this point of my life, I have of my life, I have never touched any drugs. Not that I've been taking drugs since then, because the only drug I ever actually took was a little bit of weed, and I was much, much, much older than that. And uh, but that's not the story time. So I remember just like talking to him, and then I just fell asleep again. And then I'm waking up again, and I'm in a different room. I'm actually in like the a bit like Emma, not um, A and E. I don't know if that's what it was because there's lots of people waiting to be admitted or not waiting to be sit by the doctor and I remember being really really sick vomiting a lot and um, and finally I said to someone can you can you give me my phone 
So uh, one of the nurses brought my phone and uh, I had all these missed calls from my friend of the messages like, when you wake up, call me. A message from my sister saying, I'm going to be there in the morning. Uh, let me know if everything is all right. Um, and that, but that point when I woke up and read this message it was like five o'clock in the morning, something like that. And I went to this pub about eight, nine o'clock. So literally, I could not remember a thing. So they finally decided they're going to admit me to the hospital uh, because they were suspecting that I have concussion. And I just kept being sick. And so we admit you to the hospital. So they put me in this room and it was like because they had like they didn't know what was wrong with me and they really didn't have any like beds free so i ended up in on the like oncology surgical oncology department so it's literally all these ladies waiting for breast cancer to be removed or just after the surgery and it was so surreal it was all these people and they were like crying and talking about the surgeries and about dying and i was just like what the hell i'm having this massive headache because of the bump on my head but i'm also having a headache from listening to all your stories um so they keep coming and saying like oh you got drunk on something really bad like oh what drugs were you taking and i was like i didn't so in the morning like the first thing in the morning my sister came in like my sister is a doctor and at that time when all this happened she was a student and she was actually doing some of her like classes or whatever they have to do to become a doctor in this hospital so so she came in and she came and she looked at me she was like what what happened last night and i was like what, what do you mean she was like all they told me is that you were partying and then someone like you were outside of the pub someone called ambulance um and they brought you here and they think that you've been really drunk or really high on drugs so i was like i did not take drugs ever in my life i said to my sister you i had two shots of vodka you know that like i can drink much more than that um so my sister i don't think she believed me at this point and then literally a couple of hours later one of my friends turned up and she was with me that night so she filled in all the blanks or at least as much as she could so i said to her like she was like what do you remember and i said to her i remember us getting there and remember having two shots of vodka i remember you taking me to the toilet because i was like i need to pee and you were like let's go and that's it so she said to me like we had two shots of vodka each and then uh, these guys and what makes it really hard these were the guys who were working with me um they were like start chat starting and joking and like all these sexual jokes and they were like because i always had like big things around here so they were like oh i've got massive tits show us your tits and they're like i would have never done it i just like pulled my dress apart and showed them my bra and she was like, that's, that's when I knew something was wrong. And uh, she was like, you said you want to pee. I took you to the toilet and I was asking you how you're feeling. And you said that like, you don't know what's wrong, but you want to go outside. So she took me outside and I was sitting uh, outside of the pub with her and another friend. And she said that I've met the most gorgeous guy ever because <laughs> he was walking past and he was asking if I'm okay. And apparently I was talking to him for like 15 minutes, like really flirty and like, oh my God, he my friend was like, he was like 10, if not 11, like, oh my God. So I was like, I don't remember a thing. She was like, oh, what a shame. And she said, and, and then you said that you're not feeling well, so you want to go home. So my friends called taxi for me, which normally I wouldn't take a taxi home because that pub was like 15 minutes walk from my house. So my friend called a taxi and um, when I stood up to get in a taxi, taxi driver was like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to take her because she's drunk. And they were like, she's not drunk. She's just not feeling well. So when I stood up to get in a taxi, I, I either lost my balance or like I had a really bad reaction, but I fell and I hit my head on the curb. And apparently that's all the like all the like bad things happen and uh, so I hit my head and I started like seized having like a kind of a seizure and obviously I know this all from my friend so I don't have any recollection of what's happened so I started like shaking and started vomiting and I started choking on my own vomit and um, thanks God my friend's mom is a nurse so she she did teach her how to do like basic CPR or not basic CPR like to do CPR and uh, the other colleague of mine he was trained like a paramedic 
well, train first aid there, do something learning how to be paramedic. And they put me in the right position. Obviously, I was sick and they make sure that I wasn't choking. They called um, ambulance. Then I was taken in the ambulance. Then apparently, I was sick all over the ambulance. I was even sent a bill to pay for cleaning ambulance, which was like £50. But when you do that, it's a lot of money. So my friend told me this story and I was like... And I said, how? What, what the hell? So she said, like, she asked to go in the ambulance with me and they said, nobody can go with me, you know, that, and whatever. So so she, she said she stayed there. But it was all really weird because, like, everyone was acting all weird. Like, when she was saying, what's happened? Like, they were like, oh, she just got drunk. And, and she told them, like, no, she only had two shots of alcohol. And uh, they were all like, you know, like, nothing happened. And, um, and yeah, so she told me what's happened and I was like, I didn't take any drugs and I wasn't drunk and like me and her we used to drink like a bottle of vodka each on Saturday and then still go out clubbing so she knew how much I could drink before I get drunk so um, it was all weird because I think I stayed in hospital for about two and a half days after that and uh, at first like everyone was coming in and they were like um, you're here because you got drunk you're going to get drunk you got really sick you got drunk and I was really annoyed I remember like the students coming and I knew them because they live in the same like campus area that where my sister was and they were coming in you know being like I'm very important almost a doctor on my fourth year and they were like oh so you're here because you got drunk and I was like no I'm here because something happened to me and I don't know what it was I was not drunk so I was lucky that the doctor who was in charge um the time when I was brought to hospital decided to run a drug test um, because he was like everyone around when when I was picked up everyone said she had two shots of vodka she had, she had two shots of vodka so he thought that I overdosed on drugs so they wanted to know what drugs I took to just in case I'll have really bad reaction and they have to uh, do something and um, finally on my like, second like almost at the end of the second day of ho being in hospital this nurse uh, said to me, oh, the doctor wants to talk to you. And the doctor came in and he said to me, like, you were right. You were on drugs. And I was like, what, what do you mean I was right? I was on drugs. Because at some point I mentioned to them, like, did someone slip something in my drink? So he said to me, like, we thought that you were high on coke or whatever. But actually you had a um, rape drug in your drink. And... Uh, and I started crying because I was like, first of all, I was with people who I trusted because I worked with them. These guys made drinks for me hundreds of times before that. Um, and second thing is, is like, I could have died that night. If I just, just, if I decided to go get out of this pub by myself and just tell my friends like, bye, I'm going home. And then I fell, head, hit my head and just choke on my own vomit, I would be dead. So, um... So then I was released, obviously, from hospital. Um, it was all really weird. Like, at, my parents were working abroad that time, and they were coming back home. I think it was, like, a week before Christmas when it all happened, maybe two weeks. I think about a week. Um, I begged my sister not to tell my parents because I knew that they would be really angry and upset that things like this happened. And um, so I was, I was sent home a few days before Christmas, and it was confirmed that I had concussion. Um, and I... I suffered for like a while after all that because um, I had like I have like problems with my memory I was forgetting words like me and my sister we went home for Christmas and I begged her not to tell my parents and and everyone knew like I was 20 I was a drinker my parents knew that I love drinking and all that so when we went for Christmas my parents were like oh let's have a drink or something I was like no no I'm fine I don't want to drink and they were like my mom, every time when I didn't want to drink or I put on weight or something, she was out for that I was pregnant. <laughs> so she was like, you want to tell us something? I was like, no, no, I just, just don't want to drink. Like, oh, I want to, it's a build up for New Year's. So I want to stay sober over Christmas and all that. But I had these moments when I was forgetting the words. As I was only like a week or a week and a half after the, the incident. So, like, we, I remember sitting at the, like a Christmas, uh, on, the, on the Christmas day sitting and having me with my parents and I wanted butter someone to pass me butter and I was like can you give me this this, this yellow thing and my sister was like butter I was like yeah butter ah silly me um and it happened for a couple of months after that I was forgetting words I was forgetting like what I was doing um it was really scary um I went back to work um on a new year's eve 
and uh, all the friendly relationship I had with the people I was working with, all the jokes and all that, it was gone. Um, I was talking to my manager, he said like, what's happened, like, you got pissed or something? And I was like, no, I had two shots, you saw me having two shots, I said, someone spiked my drink. And he was like, oh, don't be silly. And uh, I said to him, like, I actually was tested by the doctors and uh, they confirmed that uh, my drink was spiked. And um, he was like, it was really weird. And then we had a staff meeting and he said to the staff meeting that my drink was spiked during that party. And everyone who was there was like, it was people from this other party. I'm sure that that was them. That's what happened. Um, and I was like, nobody was at this table. The only time I didn't look like, I said it was like eight of us or whatever sitting at this table. I just turned around when I was talking to people on the other table. No one from this other party was around. And um, and I'm sure it was someone I'm working with. Um, so after that, my trust in people was gone. My trust in, uh, you know, partying and drinking with these people was gone. It took me months to actually like have a drink with them again. Like... If I ordered a drink, like, or if I wanted a drink while I was working, because, yeah, we were, whatever, I was, like, watching them when they were making my drink. Or if I went there as a customer on my night off, I will watch them making my cocktail, or I will order, like, something in the bottle. And since then, like, I've learned to be very careful with drinks, because I was lucky. I was so lucky that actually falling down and having that concussion, that saved me, because my friend was like, what, what, like, what would happen if, if you actually went home and then one of these guys would call you and then you tell them, yeah, yeah, come over to mine and we would bang or I'm going to come to yours. Because uh, like she said you were like a zombie. You didn't know what was going on. I have my suspicions who it was who spiked my drinks. And uh, I actually am not sure if it was my drink that was supposed to be spiked or my friend. Because... Um, we were always together, we were always like joking with these guys and like because we like we, we were real flirty with everyone but when we were twenty years old, I think they were thinking that like we liked them or something. But it was both of us like both our shot glasses were next to each other all the time and our juice glasses were next to each other. And me and her we were best friends so we like drink each other drinks and stuff. So even if I was like before that and after that, if one of us was like like is it my drink or your drink and we're like doesn't matter and we just just drink it so i don't know if it was my drink or it was her drink but i i kind of know who did that <sighs> if you ask me why i didn't go to the police it's because i could not prove who did it i am one of these lucky ones that i actually had it confirmed that it was drugs in my system that it wasn't just um me getting drunk or taking drugs which as i say i don't do um but knowing like what's happened it it made me just lose my trust in people for a really long time it made me not to want to order like get someone if someone offered to buy me a drink i would go to the bar with this person or i would say like i want to order my drink and say it being made for a really long time um i'm not going to say that i didn't like i wouldn't say i forgot about it but as years went by i was less careful and uh, luckily it never happened to me again but um I'm just making this video to like warn some of the girls to like be really really careful um because it's it's really weird feeling when you wake up and you don't know where you are when you're naked you don't know where you are you 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 physically hurt as I said I had this bump on my head I was lucky to wake up in hospital I was lucky that my friends knew what to do when I started seizing and uh, I was lucky that my doctors ran the blood test so I knew uh, why I was feeling the way I was feeling and what's happened to me. Please, please, please be careful when you go on a night out. And I know it's like it's October, some of you only just started uni and uh, it's fun, you know, being a student, living away from home for the first time. And, uh, you know, being out, to, <laughs> going out whenever you want and drinking and having guys coming up to you offering you a drink. But the thing is, nobody have to go to the bar and buy you a drink to spike your drink. It takes seconds for someone to walk past you, just slip something in your drink. You can't taste it. You can't see it. And you might end up waking up <laughs> in some strange guy house, being raped, being killed. You might not wake up because you might be killed. And... Um, 
just be careful girls and guys because it happens to men as well um there is lots of stories about guys having day drink spikes in like strip clubs and stuff like that by uh by the girls and then then being robbed in the evening but that's a different <laughs> kind of story but that's my story time my experience and say watching this little like video on youtube today reminded me of what happened and reminded me how silly i was and um and how i wouldn't like i, I would like to warn everyone from um, accepting drinks from strangers or just be careful on the night out and when you go out with your friends and you see that one of your friends start acting weird please like ask them if they're okay keep an eye on them don't let them live with the guy that they just met if they start acting funny and say that they're being sick and they don't know what's going on put them in a taxi or go with them and know that you might want to enjoy your night out but keep you know keeping yourself and your friends safe is so important so here's my story time. I know it wasn't a happy, bubbly, funny one, but it was what happened to me and uh, I don't want it to happen to any of you. So stay safe, girls. Drink responsibly. And it's October, so maybe go sober for October and stick to your soft drinks. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.